Pylodictus olivaris, better known as the flathead catfish. If you fish for catfish, then this fish is on your bucket list of catfish that you want to catch. Flathead catfish were originally native to the Mississippi River drainages east of the Continental Divide. Today, in the contiguous United States, outside of the extreme northeast and a few Rocky Mountain states, flathead catfish can be found just about everywhere. While originally found in rivers with constant current, today they are in many reservoirs and lakes, and this lack of current gives them the opportunity to grow to massive proportions. The flathead catfish is the second largest catfish in the United States, with only the blue catfish growing larger. While their overall numbers are less than the blue catfish, they fight much harder pound for pound, and that is probably why so many catfish anglers want to catch these elusive fish. If you're determined to catch one of these catfish, one of the first things that you've got to figure out is what is the best catfish bait? In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the best choices for catfish bait, how to rig it, and where to throw it. Tip number one is to use some kind of fish from the waters that you fish in. Now, if you watch any of my videos, you've seen me catch hundreds, if not thousands of catfish on chicken. Yes, even flatheads. Now, while I will continue to use this bait, and I do believe that chicken breast is a great catfish bait for catching blues and channel catfish, I really believe this bait is designed for targeting fish that are feeding on mussels and aquatic snails. Yes, we have caught flathead catfish on chicken, and will continue to do so, even some really big fish, but if you are truly targeting flathead catfish, I believe you need to go with some type of fish, whether it be cut bait or live. Now what about the manufactured baits, the stink baits, the pack baits, the stuff you can buy that comes in a package that you see in a sporting goods store? Listen, some people will catch some flathead catfish on these baits, but again, these baits are not really designed for targeting flathead catfish. I think you've got a much better chance on these manufactured package baits of catching a channel catfish or possibly a blue cat. So you decided to use some fish from the waters that you're fishing. Do you use it live or do you cut it up? This question gets brought up a lot when talking about targeting catfish, especially flathead catfish, and it leads to tip number two. Listen, there are a lot of anglers out there that swear by using live bait when targeting flatheads. Then you've got guys like myself that catch probably 85 to 90% of the flatheads that we catch on cut bait. Listen, both of these baits will catch flathead catfish, but here's a little tip to keep in mind when trying to make up whether you want to use live bait or cut bait. I believe that live bait works better in rivers, someplace that has current. I think that is why I catch so many fish on cut bait because I mainly fish lakes and reservoirs. My theory is this, live bait needs to be active for flatheads to hone in on it. If you're in a lake or a reservoir, a lot of times these live baits can simply sit on the bottom, lay down behind a piece of wood or a little bit of cover, and not be detected. However, when you put one of these live baits out into a river where there is some current, they have to swim, they have to move to stay stable and stay in place. Now, if you're wanting to use live bait in still water in lakes and reservoirs, I may have a way around that. We'll talk about that in a minute when we get to presentations, but I think cut bait works a lot better when you are in lakes and reservoirs, and I think that live bait really performs better when you're in rivers. So you made your mind up on whether you're using cut bait or live bait. Now you got to decide which fish you want to use. Now, in my opinion, where legal, I think it's hard to beat sunfish, also known as brim or bluegill, or even crappie. The smaller sunfish, brim and bluegill, are found in most all reservoirs, lakes, and rivers. Now, like I said, not every place is it legal to use brim or bluegill, but if you can use them in the area that you're fishing, it's hard to beat them as a live or cut bait. Another fish that's hard to beat anywhere in America is gizzard shad. If gizzard shad are available, virtually every predator fish will feed on them. 
gives her a chance to you can use live or as cut bait. But I will say this, sunfish are a lot more hardy and will stay alive longer than gizzard shad. The one downside to using gizzard shad is acquiring them. There are basically two ways to get them. You either buy them from a live bait dealer or you have to throw a cast net to catch them. They're not a fish that you can catch on rod and reel. They won't hit conventional baits. So throwing a cast net is the only way to get them while you're out on the water. Another great catfish bait that is only native to the Mississippi River drainages are skipjack. Now these fish are a lot more difficult to keep alive after being caught, but they make an excellent cut bait due to their oily nature. Now if you're planning on using any of these fish as live bait, here's a tip to help you keep them alive. A lot of people like to use aerators to try to put oxygen into the water. But here's the deal, you can only force so much oxygen into your bait tank. Ideally, in a perfect world, you need to keep constant fresh water flowing. Now, that's not always possible if you're bank fishing and you've got a bucket set up. So, make sure you swap out the water regularly that is in your bait tank. Now, if you're not keeping your fish alive, put them on ice immediately after they are caught. The best thing to do is put them into a Ziploc bag and lay them on top of the ice inside of a cooler. Now, for flathead catfish, bait presentation is very important. For live bait, I like for the baits to be suspended. Having them suspended in the water column underneath the bobber makes it a lot harder for those little critters to hide from the flathead catfish that are pursuing them. I prefer to have them two to three feet off the bottom so they're an easy target for flathead catfish that are cruising the bottom. Now, if you prefer to put your baits directly on the bottom, there are two rigs that work great. The first one is the Santee rig, and it's kind of a hybrid version between being on the bottom and suspended. While the rig maintains contact with the bottom by a sinker, a float on the leader line allows your bait to lift up off of the bottom. Now, I believe the Santee rig works a lot better with cut bait than it does with live bait. Using live bait on a Santee rig when you're anchored can kind of spin the rig into a mess. So I think you're better off going with a Carolina rig or a fish finder rig. These two rigs place the bait directly on the bottom. These are also very affordable and easy rigs to tie. Keeping your rigs affordable is an important thing because you're gonna lose some of them. And that leads me to my next tip, plan on losing gear. Flathead catfish love structure, they love cover, so you are gonna be putting your baits in some areas that will probably have some snags. No matter what you do, sooner or later, you're gonna lose some rigs, sometimes multiple rigs in the same night. So make sure you pack plenty of extra sinkers, hooks, swivels, and leader material. Inevitably, when pursuing flathead catfish, that old tackle-eating monster from the deep will take his toll.